Hello everyone, it's October 7th and it's time for the 14th episode of the 50 Meter Beer Project. I'm quite excited today because we're taking two very important steps. Uh, the first of those being we are taking the first step to get ready for malting, which I'm hoping to start next weekend. And I'm finally getting around to testing my yeast. So let's start off with the yeast. Over the past several episodes, I have captured some wild yeast. I have grown them out onto plates to isolate pure strains and then use those to ferment some test wort. So today I actually did some taste samples in order to see which one it is that I'd wanted to use for my project. So the way I go about doing that is fairly simple and straightforward. What I do is I use a sanitized pipette to remove as much of the media from the tube as I can without disturbing my yeast pellet in the bottom. This way my tube continues to act as my reservoir for the yeast, but I can remove the fermented beer in order to see exactly what it is that it tastes like. So my first step is always to check attenuation, uh, and I do this using a refractometer. So I put a couple drops of wort on there, I check the gravity. Now refractometers don't read fermented gravity directly, so you have to use a calculator to convert. And actually all of these strains I generated here all produced 85% to 99% attenuation, so they all attenuated fine and so I know that they would be suitable for brewing beer. If my pH meter was working, I'd also check the pH. I'd like to make sure that that pH drops to an appropriate range, but unfortunately it's not working at the moment, so I wasn't able to do that. Once that's done, the next step is to actually check the control to sort of calibrate myself. So this is the same wort, but fermented with W3470 lager yeast. Uh, so I can use this as to sort of see what the yeasts have done to the same wort. Once I've calibrated, I'm then going to smell the wort, and if it smells okay, I'll then take a taste and see what it tastes like. Now it turns out these yeasts were pretty attenuative. They didn't leave a lot behind. They also didn't leave a lot of flavor behind, except for one of them. Barley number four has a somewhat reasonable taste to it. It is a little on the bland side, so I might want to try fermenting a little bit warmer to push out a few more esters, uh, but it wasn't very phenolic and it left some of the malt and hop character behind, which was great because some of the other strains actually stripped that from the beer and didn't leave me with much. So I have my yeast selected now. So the next step is actually to get ready for malting. So I've done some germination tests and both the Harrington and the Bear Barley are finally germinating properly, which tells me I've gotten them through dormancy. And so now it's time to begin malting. Now the very first step before I can actually malt is to determine how dry my grain is uh, that I've been storing. And the reason for that is the first step in malting is to soak your grain in order to get it to a desired moisture content. And the only way you can do that is if you know what the actual moisture content of the barley is at the start. So most malts you want to be between about 38 and 45 percent moisture by weight when you start the actual germination process. But of course, if you're already at 10%, then you know that you're only looking to add, you know, 18 to 25% additional weight in water. And hitting the right moisture content is critical for producing the type of malt that you want. Less moisture gives you a malt more like a Pilsner malt, where it's not as modified as a higher moisture malt. Essentially, the grain runs out of water as it's sprouting, and so it doesn't uh, develop and mature as much, giving you a less modified malt. You make it more moist, that moisture, of course, will allow it to germinate longer, and now you get a more fully modified malt. So the first step is to determine what our starting moisture percentage is, and it's actually a fairly simple process. I weigh out between 20 to 25 grams of grain. I then mill them as fine as I reasonably can. I'm not aiming necessarily for flour, but you do want them broken up into fairly small pieces. I actually tried to start doing this using a mortar and pestle, but that did not work, uh, so I switched over to our spice grinder. And then I weigh in an aluminum tray to see how much that weighs and then add the grain to that so that I have the total mass of the aluminum tray plus the ground grain. And of course I can determine the weight of the ground grain because I can just subtract from that the weight of the aluminum tray that I took before. I then am going to dry this in the oven on convection mode for two to three hours at about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, so you know about 125 degrees Celsius, and that should push out all of the moisture. I then re-weigh that tray with the grain in it, and I can now, by using the weight of the tray, plus the now weight of the tray plus the dry grain, figure out what that dry weight is. 
And once I have those dried weights, I can then calculate what my percent moisture is fairly easily. Um, and from there, I now can determine when I start to soak my grains, what I want my mass of grain to be at the end of soaking. So for example, here I seem to be running somewhere around 8 to 10% moisture in my grain, which actually means I probably over dried it before I put it into storage. But nonetheless, that means that when I'm adding water to it, that I'm starting with 10%. So I don't need to add 46% more moisture, I only need to add 36% more moisture. Uh, and that will give me now a malt with roughly the desired moisture content that I can then start to germinate in order to finally make my finished malt. So that's basically it for tonight. Uh, next weekend I'm going to start the malting process, so hopefully in a week or two I have an additional update for you. So until then, I'm Brian from Sue Brewing, and thank you for watching.